Now, stomach pain is something we all have on the occasional basis. Even yours truly, your GI, your poop guru, can have stomach pain. However, chronic pain that gets worse could be a sign of a stomach ulcer. That's something we don't want to joke around with. In today's video, I'm going to give you five signs you may be having an ulcer. I'll give you five ways that we diagnose it. And at the very end of the video, I'll give you my recommendation on what you need to do to make sure you don't have an ulcer. Guys, let's talk about it. Hi, yo, Dr. Islam here, aka your poop guru and gut microbiome expert. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist trained at the Mayo Clinic. I'm CS Lab Gastro for all your GI needs. So, the first sign is persistent abdominal pain, specifically in the epigastric area. So, the epigastric area, which is right here in the middle of your abdomen, is the area where your stomach is at. And pain in the area could be a sign of an ulcer. Now, epigastric pain can also be other symptoms for other conditions as well pancreas issues gallbladder issues, even esophageal issues. But one of the first things I worry about when someone comes to see me for epic gastric pain that's always there is a stomach ulcer. Then this feeling will be a burning pain, a gnawing pain, a pain that does not go away, and it may be related to what you're eating as well. Now, sometimes this pain will get better if you have an anti-nausea medication or an acid medication, but don't be fooled, it will come back. Number two is bloating and nausea. Now, you'd be surprised that bloating and nausea could also be a sign of stomach ulcer, but absolutely you can. When you have a lot of irritation, that stomach ulceration, inflammation, you're going to feel bloated, nausea, you're not going to feel good. And that alone can be a sign or a symptom of a stomach ulcer as well, especially if you don't have any other reason why you're having the bloating and the nausea. Number three, you have additional heartburn and indigestion. Now, that can also be a sign of an ulcer. Yes, it can. Now, heartburn and digestion is not just due to acid reflux. It can also be a manifestation of an ulcer going on inside that stomach. Because ulcers commonly can also cause the sensation of heartburn and indigestion, not feeling good, the bubbly stomach or the gut bubbles as well. Now, if you have regularly occurring heartburn, regurgitation, or feeling just that brackish taste in your mouth, that could be a sign that an ulcer is brewing in your stomach and needs to be investigated. Sign number four getting fuller earlier and loss of appetite. Now, if you're realizing you're not eating as much as you used to, your plate is just not empty all the time, you're getting fuller longer or your appetite is poor. Absolutely, this is a sign of an ulcer. In fact, we call this what's called a warning sign, which you know, bling, 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 makes me worried that not only could you have an ulcer, there could be something else brewing inside that stomach, even a cancer. So when you have an ulcer or something growing in that stomach, that takes up room, it takes up mass inside your stomach. And so because of that, you don't eat as much as you normally do. You leave food on your plate. You also get fuller earlier and more often. You're just not as hungry. And also that thing is taking up room, so you actually lose your appetite as well. And as that ulcer is causing more and more damage inside your stomach, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Having early satiety or getting fuller quicker and more often is not normal. Losing weight this way is not normal. And so if you start to have these symptoms, this should be a red flag to you because it's a red flag to me that something else is going on that needs to be investigated so we can find out what we can do to get you feeling better. And then lastly, blood, vomiting blood, black blood, blood in your poo, black stools. This is an absolute warning sign that you have an ulcer. In fact, that ulcer may progress to become a bleeding ulcer. If you are vomiting blood, you have black stools, you are anemic, do not, do not, do not ignore that because I am worried that ulcer is going to bust open and cause torrential bleeding to occur, which can lead you to the ICU. So I'll tell you a story of a patient of mine. I had an individual that was taking pain medications, a leave on a consistent basis for neck pain. Then all of a sudden, he started pooping out blood. Blood was coming from his bottom and he was feeling sick, dehydrated, hypotensive. He went to the emergency room where I saw him and I actually did an upper scope emergently and I found a bleeding ulcer that was spurting out blood. Luckily, he was able to treat it and get that taken care of. He did okay, but I'm glad he listened to the warning signs. You should not be pooping out blood. You should not be anemic. You should not be vomiting blood because if that happens, I want you to stop the video and go straight to the emergency room. That is something to not joke around about. So now that I scared the living bejesus out of you, how exactly do we diagnose an ulcer here? Five ways. Number one, a simple history and physical. Let me talk to you and ask you questions. The main questions I ask, do you have epigastric pain? Is it associated with eating? Are you vomiting blood? Do you have black stools? How is your appetite? Do you take things like Aleve, Naproxen, Advil, Motrin, Aspirin? Do you take a blood thinner? These are things that commonly cause ulcers. And what I'll do is I'll palpate the belly, I'll feel. And if I feel pain in the epigastric area, that's gonna ring up you know, bells that I think you may have an ulcer 
and we may need to find out what's going on. After that, what I will do as a GI doctor, because I can see what's going on, I will recommend what's called an upper endoscopy or an EGD. This is where we use a very small camera, take a look inside the stomach and the small intestine to see why you're having the issues. And we can see an ulcer, but not only can we see it, we can find out exactly what stage it's in in terms of healing. Do we need to put you on medical therapy to get that taken care of? Can we treat it at that time? We can also maybe take biopsies of that ulcer to find out why you have the ulcer. Tip number three is that we can do what's called testing for H. pylori. So I mentioned anti-inflammatory medications as a common cause for ulcer. Another common cause is a bacterial infection called H. pylori. And this is the very common bacterial infection that affects a lot of the population. But a lot of the population do not manifest as ulcers. There's some trigger that can cause this infection to become active to manifest into an ulcer. And there are a couple different ways we can diagnose you with H. pylori. One is a blood test. Now, I never recommend a blood test. It's not useful. It doesn't help out because this blood test will always be positive if you've ever had H. pylori. So if you were like a three month old and for some reason you got infected with H. pylori, but you're asymptomatic, your blood test will be normal. I never order it. Number two is a breath test where you breathe into a machine. You actually ingest some substance. It kind of works its magic. You expel out some other substance. We can measure the height of that substance to see if you have H. pylori. Now, the important thing about this test is that you have to be off of acid medications, bismuth, and antibiotics for at least two weeks to make sure we can do an accurate test. Number three is a stool testing where you literally sift through your stool and we can check this for H. pylori. Just like the breath testing, you have to be off certain things, PPIs or acid medications, bismuth, and antibiotics for at least two weeks for us to make sure we can do an accurate test. Then lastly, we can do a biopsy during the upper endoscopy. So while I'm down there, I will take some samples to see if you actually have H. pylori or not. By far, the EGD with biopsy is the most accurate way for us to diagnose you with H. pylori. Another test that we may do is that we actually may check your stool for blood doing an FOBT test. Now, I typically don't do that because I'm going to take a look and see what's going on, but maybe your primary care provider may go ahead and do this test to see if you are bleeding, which could be a sign of a bleeding ulcer as well. And then lastly, checking your blood for anemia is an important finding because you may not realize you're anemic or you're losing blood, but we can see it on a blood testing. And if you are anemic and there's a concern about an ulcer, we want to take a look to see exactly what's going on. So if you are worried about an ulcer, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell your doctor you want to do three things. Number one, get tested for H. pylori, whether it's a stool testing, a breath testing, or a biopsy. Number two, you want to consider doing what's called an upper endoscopy or an EGD. This is where I take a look and see what's going on and hopefully get things taken care of for you. And number three, you want to be placed some medications to heal that ulcer, whether it's stopping anti-inflammatory medications, getting on antibiotics for H. pylori, or starting an acid-reducing medication. Anybody in which there's a concern for an ulcer, I always start an acid-reducing medication to help heal up the ulcer and get that taken care of. So this is everything you need to know about ulcers. If any of these symptoms sound familiar to you, come see us up at Gastro where we take care of ulcers every single day. We're experts on this. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have a question about an ulcer? Do you know what's going on? Do you have any other symptoms of ulcers I did not mention? Comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Well, thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And come see us if you want to learn more information. And don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter where you can get great information like you're learning in today's video. Well, thank you for watching. Don't forget, let's talk about poop. Thanks, everyone.